video, we're going to diagnose a Tipman 98 Custom Platinum Series with a leak. I'll go ahead and kind of demonstrate what this marker is doing, and we're just going to kind of listen for where the leak is coming from. And you can kind of hear that leak. Um, now, just from listening to that, it sounds like it might be coming from our gas line connection going into our valve assembly and I'll kind of get into that here in a second. Um, first thing I usually always do when dealing with a uh, leaky marker is I'll attach the air source and I'll just kind of go through each spot and just kind of check it off you know um, you know there's only really four um, you know four areas that it can actually leak from um, you have your tank adapter area which has this little uh, bleeder hole on the side here. Um, sometimes you can actually get a leak from the tank adapter itself or the bleeder hole. And usually that's going to indicate a bad tank o-ring. Um, you know, if that's not leaking, then I usually go to the next point, which would be the uh, connection for the gas line and the tank adapter itself. This is a self-sealing gas line. You don't need any kind of thread tape or uh, thread sealant or anything like that. It just simply needs to be nice and snug. snug. So um, I usually check that area out. If uh, you know if you're experiencing a leak from that area, it's more than likely just this uh, gas line nut being a little loose. And the same goes for the top up here where the gas line actually connects into the valve body. Um, this is also a self-sealing gas line, or more or less like a pressure fit gas line. What you're doing is you're just threading this gas line in and the gas line will push to the underside of the valve body and actually create the seal. So if this uh, gas line's loose, you'll actually hear a leak right here in this area, right where the split is. And uh, you know, if you're listening right in this area and you don't really hear it coming from here, you hear it more or less coming down the barrel or out of the feed tube, um, that's more than likely going to be uh, just an internal valve leak and uh, that'll just be a leak down the power tube. So uh, we've already diagnosed the leak. It's obviously coming from this area. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kinda just tear into this gun real quick. Just what I'm gonna do is just pull the receiver off. We'll pull the internals out and I'll kinda show you the connection between the gas line and the valve. go ahead and uh, we'll remove our sear spring, our end cap drive spring, and our ACT spring. And then from there what I like to do is we'll go ahead and, and you can see mainly my leak was just due to that gas line being loose but you know we're gonna just take a little extra precaution. We're gonna disassemble it and actually inspect that valve body and also inspect the gas line itself. Um, sometimes, you know, if the, the gas line gets loose like that, um, you can run into dirt and debris getting stuck in between the gas line and the valve body. And even if you get that gas line tight, it'll still leak. So we'll go ahead, we'll just kind of pull this assembly out. And as you can see, I'm pulling the gas line down out of the way. And then we'll pull the valve assembly out. So we have our front bolt and our power tube. Now, this is going to be kind of kind of harder to see, but there's kind of like this, uh, I don't know what you'd call it, more like a cone shape, okay? And uh, you have the opposite on the gas line. So the gas line just, like I said, it just press fits to the bottom of the valve assembly. There's no O-ring here. It's just, you know, just uh, the gas line pressure pushing up against the valve body. So usually I just go through and kind of inspect the valve body. One thing that um, some of the service techs do notice, um, you know, if, if there's a customer out there that removes their gas line and they kind of put it in there, um, what I like to call blindly, they're not really seeing where the gas line's going, they're just threading it in there and just tighten it down. If you don't get that gas line seated correctly in the bottom of the valve body, 
then uh, you run the risk of damaging the outside of the valve body. And then from there, it doesn't matter how tight you try to get that gas line, it'll just continuously leak because you damage the valve body. So you always want to make sure that you get the gas line seated correctly into the valve body, and I'll kind of show you that here in a minute. But um, just inspecting this valve body, it looks good. I mean, there's no dirt or debris or anything like that. And I usually also inspect the hose. Um, you know, you want to make sure that the sometimes what can happen is if you over tighten this, it'll actually flare out at the top and that'll also cause it to leak. Doesn't matter how tight you get it, it'll just continuously leak. So um, everything looks good here. We'll just go ahead, we'll uh, put our front bolt back on and uh, go ahead and get our linkage arm back in the front bolt and just kind of slide this whole assembly back in and go ahead and put our rear bolt back in. And one thing too, it's gonna be kind of difficult to see here, but you can see the velocity screw. Try to get that somewhat lined up with the, you know, the hole on the outside of the receiver. It doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, you, you can use an Allen wrench to just kind of line everything up. And I'll, I'll also show you how to use the gas line to line up the valve body too. So go ahead and put your rear bolt back in. And we'll throw our drive spring and our ACT spring back in. May have to turn that bolt to get that hole to line up, but it should go together really easily. Okay, and then from there, I'm gonna kind of turn this sideways. And I usually just take the gas line, and you can see how the gas line is just going straight into the underside of the valve body. And I just, you know, thread it in by hand. And you can kind of see how it just went and it popped in and you're just going to thread that in by hand and while I'm doing that I usually kind of pull it side to side up and down just to make sure that I'm in that valve body you know you want to make sure that the gas lines getting seated in the valve body so get it as tight as you can by hand like I said wiggle it up and down left to right just to make sure you're getting a good seat and then from there that's about all the further that you need to go and we'll go ahead we'll install our sear spring and we'll go ahead and put our receiver half back on. So we'll go ahead and tighten our receiver down. You never want to tighten your gas line um, before putting the receiver half on because you can actually break the receiver half. So go ahead and get our receiver half back on. And then from there, you can actually go through and then uh, tighten your gas line. Like I said, always tighten your gas line last. So, and it, it shouldn't take a lot of torque either. I mean, just hand tight. You know, I'm not really putting a lot of torque on this. You know, just turn it until it stops. You know, and then from there, go ahead and just air this up just to check to make sure we don't have any other leaks coming from anywhere else. And we got that tank aired up and I don't hear any leaks coming from anywhere. Um, you know, if you're always second, you know, guessing yourself, what you could do is take a little soapy water and you can kind of drip it around the fittings. And if you see it bubbling up, then obviously you know that you still have a leak, but just by listening to the marker, I don't hear any leaks. So, um, you know, it, it seems like it's all good now. Um, and that's just how you uh, diagnose and uh, fix a leak on the Titman 98 Custom Platinum Series.